Welcome to the second webinar that we're running for the Shieldra uh, that's taking place in April, following on from the nutrition talk that we did a few weeks ago. So hopefully you have managed to put into practice some of the advice that we were giving on that. And if you haven't seen that, then it is available on YouTube. So you can get onto YouTube and have a look at that if you haven't had a chance to catch up. However, this evening we are going to go through... Uh, I'm going to basically go through the mandatory kit list. I thought that was the easiest way to start, just to look at the mandatory kit list, go through, show you the sort of kit that I would use during an event like this um, and the sort of thing that you should be looking for. Um, what I would say is, yes, a lot of my kit you will see is very small and very lightweight. Um, that's I've been doing it a long time. I do a lot of racing. So over the years, my kit has, yes, got smaller, lighter, Quite often that comes with a price tag, but I do use it a lot. You will have something similar that you can use, waterproof jackets, waterproof trousers and things that do not need to come in such um, small, lightweight uh, sort of packages. So I'll show you my kit, but don't think, oh, my God, that's exactly what we need. Uh, you can always find something at home that's that will work just the same. Um, most of the... Kit is pretty self-explanatory um, and it is all non-negotiable. It's mandatory kit. You must carry it with you at all times. Now, there is some recommended kit that you that you can add on that we'll get to as well. But the mandatory kit you must have in your um, run pack, your backpack at all times. <clears throat> Sometimes an event uh, mandatory kit list can feel a little bit over the top. Uh, but we all know what Welsh weather was like. If anyone was on the recce with me the other week, then we know exactly what the weather can be like. It it can be awful, freezing, um, and even in the middle of in the middle of summer, it can be horrendous. And when you're out there all day, you can get really cold and really wet if that weather's bad. So if you tw when you're 12 hours in and the heavens are open and it's hailing and raining. You will be very glad that you've got those extra layers, the gloves, the buff, waterproof trousers in your backpack. So do not scrimp on the mandatory kit list. Make sure you carry, <clears throat> excuse me, that mandatory kit. Um, something that I just want you to know is basically as you get tired, you, you, you get colder because you're not moving as quickly and it's much easier for your body to get cold. Your body is trying to use the energy elsewhere. To, to try and keep moving. So the, the energy it doesn't use the energy for is trying to heat itself up. So once you get cold, and as you all know what I mean when I say you're cold to the bone, it's very hard to heat up again once you start fatiguing. So the trick with it is don't get cold in the first place, um, which I know sounds really simple, but it is, you know, if you're starting to feel cold, go, right, is it because I've got wet gloves on or I don't have any gloves on? Put some gloves on. Um, put a hat on. Put your jacket on. Or swap a mid layer if it's soaking wet. It, it's thinking ahead. Uh, so a motto I was given in my very first ultra uh, was um, quite a way into a, a very long ultra. But the person I was running with gave me a motto that has stuck with me for well, wherever we're at, seven years down the line now. And it is the first rule of camping. And he always said to me, he said to me, the first rule of camping is never get wet. Uh, and the principle is, if you if it starts raining, get a jacket on. Yes, of course, you're going to get wet. But the the point being is, don't. Th it's too easy to think, I can't be bothered. I can't bother getting my jacket out of my bag. I'll be fine. I'll just get wet. If you're already three hours into a 14-hour day, you're going to get wet and cold very quickly. So if it starts raining, get your jacket out and put it on. Um. You because otherwise you work once you get cold, it'll find it really hard to warm up. So, like I said, we'll go through the manager kit list. I'll show you my kit and it'll give you some idea of what you need. So, first on the list is your watch. This is my watch. I've got a Garmin. Um, this will give me the maps, it will tell me time, paces, every all the information that I need. Um, everyone. There's obviously different watches out there, different levels. The the back this this will last a long time, but a lot of the watches now, the battery will will see you will see you through. Um, and if you've got a mapping feature on it, then that's great. You can download the GPX to that. What I would say is if you have got a mapping feature on your watch, 
practice it in training. Don't wait until the event itself and go, oh, my watch can take a GPS. I'll put it on it and then go, I've no idea how to use it. Use it during training, even on even on routes that you know. So when I first got my watch, because I wanted to learn how to use it, I would plot a GPS around my house in the local area and just follow it and go, oh, I know how to use it. So that was that would be my recommendation with the watch. Mobile phone, self-explanatory. Portable charger is something like this. So I'll, exp I'll explain my little carrier bag in a minute. Portable charger can be as small as this. Something like this will take, will give your phone a full charge. So I always, when I do an event, I carry that charger. This is Anchor. The, the brand is Anchor. You can get them from Amazon. They're relatively cheap, but they're brilliant. So that um, will charge your phone in one hole, in one hole go, or your watch or, or whatever you want to charge because it's just got a USB and you connect it to your device. But to me, I generally carry it for, for a phone charge. Reverting back to me pulling it out of this little bag. Oh, sandwich bags are great. They can keep everything waterproof. So literally, for me, all my kit, sandwich bag, elastic band in my bag. And it's as simple as that. Everything's individually wrapped. I can get to it. I know what it is. Stays waterproof. And it's just a really, really handy way of keeping your kit inside your bag waterproof. Two things. If it's peeing with rain, it'll get wet. But secondly, if it's not peeing with rain and you sweat, you will sweat through your pack into your belongings and then they'll get wet anyway. So basically, that would happen whether it's come rain or shine for me. It will go in that bag, in my pack, and it will stay dry. Uh, next up is your running vest or your hiking bag. So this is my running vest. This is a Salomon Advanced 12. So I'm sure some of you want to know. It's an Advanced 12, so it's 12 litre. So that is basically snug on my back. It can take so much more kit than you think it can. It can fit all the mandatory kit in absolutely no problem. Um, but you, what the key with whatever pack you use, there's loads of packs out there. There's all sorts. You just got to find what's comfortable on you. The key that you want is that when it's loaded and done up, you know, they simply just hook. They're dead easy to get on and off. Is that you don't want it to bounce. You want it to be solid on you that when you're running, it doesn't move. So that is the key bit with the pack that you're using um, is that you do not want it to move when it's on you. So that that's mine. I'll leave it on for now just so I can show you um, bits and bobs that are going to go in it. So one litre of water minimum. I tend to, well, depends, depends what you do, but I tend to run with soft flasks. So your options are a bladder. A run pack or a rucksack will generally take a bladder or they will take what a lot of them use now is soft bottles. These are 500 mil each and they just literally sit. There's most Pretty much all packs have this as a, as a general design. And once your bottles are full of water, you just slot them into the little pockets and then they sit in the front of you. And they just literally sit at the front of your pack there. Now, when you're running, you do not need to take these out of your pack. You don't need to take the bottles out to drink. You literally just need to put your mouth down to the mouthpiece and drink it. Obviously, the bladder would go in your back, and then each pack's different again, but it, the, the lead will feed, the hose will feed up that you can then access it. What I would say, the reason I really like soft bottles is because you can see what you've drank. If you've got a bladder in your backpack, you think you're drinking, you've walked around 10 miles you get to the checkpoint you look in your bladder and it's still full and you go oh i haven't drank what i thought i had whereas if you've got two bottles here you know well that one's empty and that one's empty so i've drank a liter of fluid um and my general rule of thumb is one 500 ml bottle per hour of water ideally with electrolytes in will be if you're using a carbohydrate drink but basically one liter what 500 ml of fluid per hour that's an average rule of thumb if it's really hot if i was doing a hot race i would be drinking two bottles per hour and then filling them up at every single checkpoint that i got to but it does make it super easy at a checkpoint to get them out undo them fill them you're not messing around with a bladder that's in the back of your backpack so that is the one litre of water that you're going to have to carry. 
Um, snacks is snacks very individual. Um, think so. You need to think of a, a of the rough time that you're going to take to complete and pack the snacks accordingly. Obviously, the checkpoint should be able to pick up snacks, but what you need is those snacks in between the checkpoints. And if you've got specific dietary requirements or you've trained with certain food, that is what I would recommend that you carry and then pick up other snacks along the way. So keep a prime example of what I would race with or run with is things like energy gels. I really like talk. Everyone's different. That's just a brand that I've used for years. I really like those. Nutri-grain bars, you don't have to get clever. You know, there's, you can, there's a, there is wonderful um fueling systems out there but that's just the kellogg's nutri grain bar i really like them they work well they're full of sugar carbohydrates so that's great and then these are also things that are are great uh shop blocks energy chews they're a bit like haribo in that principle they're just like a jelly sweet but they are carbohydrate um so they are another good option you can get various brands of those so they're just the sort of thing that i would pack that i would then have in my pack as you can see where i put them there is where my snacks go my snacks go on my left hand side at the front and on the side and i know that's where my snacks live so that when i'm running i just know i go to my left hand pocket and my food is in it um easy to access there's no fact there's not me trying to get into the back of my pack or round here i just go it's time to eat back to our nutrition talk of eating every half an hour so my alarm goes off on my phone on my watch to say time to eat i just go I'm going to eat a gel and it's right there. No faff, right there. Whilst I'm running, walking, I can get to it easily. So that's your snacks. Uh, cash, simple as, that's pretty straightforward. Uh, foldable, collapsible cup is simple as, you just want a soft cup um, that you can use for filling up your drinks. You can obviously use your bottles if you want uh, for drinking from, but you can also, so... For example, I'd come into a checkpoint, I'd fill both my bottles with water and electrolyte, but I really want a cup of Coke. So that's where I'll have that, again, just in a pocket, pull it out, I can have a cup of Coke, and off I go. So that is um, a foldable collapsible cup, that, that there's nothing to them. So you can just stick them in a pocket, they're fine, there's no weight to them. Um, so you, a hat and a buff or a snood. So... That is your buff. If, if anyone who goes, what on earth is a buff or a snood? It's literally like a like a neck warmer that can be used for that. It can literally, neck, you can have a neck warmer. You can have head, you know, it can be a head scarf. It can be various, but it's super warm and it takes up hardly any weight. Literally hardly any weight. But in the winter, that's my go-to for, for keeping my head warm. Um, You can go with a hat. You know, if it was freezing, I don't... It might be rubbish weather, but I doubt it's going to be freezing in April. So in the winter, yes, maybe a hat, but a buff is sort of plenty come April, and that will keep you super warm. Again, you can take a couple of them. You can go one neck, one head. They're, um, the other option is if it's really hot, you can use them to dunk in water and actually cool you off. So that's another option, but they're really, really handy. Next one is waterproof trousers. Again, so this is where I was saying you do not need to have necessarily what I've got. They are my waterproof trousers, which you can see are tiny. Um, but if you've got some walking trousers or, or you know, whatever, then that's absolutely fine. But I I have these because, like I said, I do a lot of racing. So these fold up into a very small, neat little pouch. These are arm um, uh, waterproof trousers. I've raced in these. I've done the Pentland Ultra uh, winter in these from start to finish because it was so cold and wet one year. Uh, but they're just great. Super lightweight, taped, uh, waterproof, warm, windproof, super light. So they're a real, they're a good pair of pants. But whatever you've got, you just need a waterproof pair of trousers. Waterproof jacket. Again, as you'll see, mine squashes up very small. Um, again, it's from racing for many many years, and you just you you end up with different kit. So. This is mine. It's super lightweight. This is a Salomon Shake Dry Gore-Tex jacket. Uh, if you've got Gore-Tex, is obviously br is brilliant. So if you can have a Gore-Tex jacket, that's great. But what you do want to look for is tape seams. You want it to be fully waterproof. It is no good if it's raining and 
you're getting soaking wet because it's coming through the seams, through your back of your neck. You will just get cold and freezing. Yes, it will keep the wind off you, but it won't keep you dry. So you do want a good, if, of all the kit, if you're going to invest in something, invest in your waterproof jacket. The rest of it, you can probably use stuff that's from that's around, that's at home, spare mid layer, whatever. But your waterproof jacket is literally, well, there's two things that you're best friends. One is your run pack. Make sure that is fits really well. And the second is your waterproof jacket. They are the two things when it comes to ultras that you want to be really, really good. Um, the next thing is bivy bag. So this is a bivy bag. Obviously, the, it's not a foil blanket, which you will have seen loads of and you get given them at the end of marathons and things like this. This is, I'm not going to undo it because once you undo it, I probably can't get it back in the bag. But as you can see, they're not big. They're only small, but they are a full body bivy bag. So if you are in trouble, the truth is a foil blanket is going to do diddly squat because it'll blow away and it won't keep you warm and it's raining and it's windy. Whereas this full body bag, you get inside the bag. You can call an SOS. You get inside your bag. You are waterproof, windproof. Put on your spare layers and you'll be able to stay warm until help comes. So that is why you need to carry a bivy bag. Uh, head torch. So again, I use a silver head torch. Um, top of my head, I can't tell you what lumen it is. It is a trail runner series. I have had this for oh, a long, long time. I think I've had it about 10 years now. But it's a great piece of kit. But you do want um, you do want to make sure. But for those that are going to be running into the night, so again, work out your timings. If you're going to be one of those people that are running into the night, walking through the night, you need to invest in a good head torch and look at the battery life on it. So you get, so I have different batteries. That's probably one of the smaller ones. I haven't got my big battery to hand, but I have a bigger battery that I know will last me all through the night. Whereas this probably lasts me about three to four hours. Whereas I've got a bigger battery that'll last about nine to 10 hours. Um, but that is it's quite a sizable head torch. But if you're running into the night, you need something that's got decent visibility. Because if you're on ter tricky terrain, uh, you need to be able to see where your feet are going. You're not running along a road where you can just put your feet one in front of the other. You are on some tricky terrain. So you need a good head torch. And then spare battery is the option. So if you have, if, it, if it's normal batteries, you just need to take some spare batteries with you. If it's a rechargeable battery, you need to look at getting a second battery for it. Or the other option is a spare head torch. So I often run with my main head torch. And then my spare is literally, again, small. You know, I've sort of gone minimal with this on weight, but it really is a great piece of kit. Top of my head, I can't remember what it's called, but it is a Petzl, Petzl head torch, which is just really little, but it's absolutely brilliant as a, as a, as a backup emergency second light there. It's a really good sort of backup head torch. So I have head torch and a spare head torch. You can either go spare batteries or a spare head torch. Uh, first aid kit. That is personal to you. That doesn't mean you need to go and buy off the internet one of these suitcase first aid kits that's got everything in it under the sun and a defibrillator and a something else and something else. That is not what you're going to need. You need something that is specific to you. What what could you need in the event? So my first aid kit, you know, it's not very big, but in it is quite a lot of stuff. So that's just a crepe bandage, obviously with a safety pin. So if I twist my ankle or my knee or anything, I can do that. And in here, as small as it looks, has actually got a lot of stuff in it. But it, it's about, it's sort of about decanting it cleverly. So I've got a little vaccine, a little chamois cream, a little tape. There's K-tape in there. There's pl uh, blister plasters. There is antiseptic wipes. There is paracetamol. There is Imodium. There is, what else do I normally have in there? I normally put my 20 quid in there, so that's where I normally have my money. Um, safety pins, some cotton buds. So that, you know, you don't need to have a massive first aid. That's how small mine is, but it carries everything that I will need. If I start to feel a blister, I can stop, I can address it, etc., etc. So don't think, oh my God, I've got to carry everything. Think what's suitable for you and what might happen to you. And that's what you need to carry. That's first aid kit. So that is your mandatory kit. With a spare for mid layer, but that is over to you. Depend, you know, that's going to depend on the weather, how cold or dry it's looking, wet, cold, warm. 
Um, so that spare clothes, spare clothes, spare gloves, spare hats, spare buffs. It's going to depend on the weather forecast and that you need to keep an eye on. Def two days out, I wouldn't bother. You can look. People look a week before. Well, that's not going to be two days out. You need to go. Right. What is the weather doing on race day? And, and pack your kit accordingly. Don't pack a load of winter gloves and winter buffs and then there's going to be a heat wave or vice versa. You need to look at the weather and pack accordingly. Um, so I would say the key things are um, additional kit, spare socks. Spare, so on that list of additional kit is dry bag, which honestly, sandwich bags with sandwich bags with an elastic band is just as good as a dry bag. You don't have to buy expensive bags. Just go to the supermarket, buy some sandwich bags um, and... Just use that. It does exactly the same job. Uh, what I would say is a great thing. I always carry just a couple of spare bags and elastic bands. They just stuff in a pocket. They weigh nothing. You can use them for, um, if you need them for kit, but also when you get to checkpoints, you can use them to put your snacks in. So you can put snacks, like we said in the last webinar, fill your bag, get walking again. So you use your sandwich bags to put your food in, and then you can get walking again rather than trying to carry it, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the other option, obviously there's other things that you could carry. Sun cream is suggested, um, sun cream, Vaseline. So it's all personal to you. Obviously, if, if it's going to be raining and gray, you're not going to need some that lotion. So that's back to that, keeping an eye on the weather thing. Um, what I will say is something to think about is, if you suffer, so hopefully you, well, you definitely need your event shoes that you're going to use and you've done some training in them. Uh, what you will know is whether you're getting any hot spots or any blisters or with your pack, if you get any areas that chafe, um, you want to deal, address that either beforehand, ideally, or you certainly, as soon as you feel a hot spot or any rubbing, you need to stop and deal with it. Because again, if you're only three hours into this event and you're going, I can feel a blister coming. You do nothing about it. By 10 hours in, you're either going to end your race or you're really going to know about it. So you're better off stopping, applying a blister plaster, dealing with it, and then you'll be able to carry on for the rest of the event. So that's my key thing. If you feel any rubbing, stop and deal with it. Do not let it get any worse. Uh, I would recommend in the morning Vaselining all sort of like key areas, um, especially any that you know that might rub under your arms, etc. Um, I'm a massive believer in cycling chamois cream. Uh, apply a lot of cycling or pseudocreme in the morning, undercarriage area, just apply a whole load of pseudocreme and chamois cream. It really does make a difference uh, for some chafing that happens later on in the day, if it's raining or not even sweating, everything. So I would recommend that. Hence, I have in my first aid kit a little thing of little, literally just, you just get them from boots or whatever, but a little Vaseline and I have a little chamois cream that if I need to top up when I'm out and about, if, if literally if I'm running along and I'm like, oh, something's rubbing, I'll get that out. I literally will be under my T-shirt rubbing Vaseline into the area that it's rubbing and then it'll just stop. So that's a handy little tip. Uh, so next one that we're going to look, socks. Um make sure that you have trained in the socks that you're planning to wear so that you know just so you know they're comfy they fit they don't give you any problems hopefully no blisters um i would say carry a spare spare pair of socks if you know you're going to be out for a long time and you have any foot issues i'd potentially say carry a couple of spare pairs but i one pair i definitely would say put a spare pair of socks in because if there's any problems you can just change your socks. And honestly, it's like a new lease of life. Putting fresh socks on your feet feels like new feet. It's like a magic little game changer. So that is one thing I would recommend. Another, well, not another option, but as well as so putting like a lubricant on your feet. Some people do, some people don't. And I never used to. And then I tried trench. Um, there are others out there, but this was developed by an ultra runner. And it's just, it is a really, really, really good bit of kit. It just covers, literally, goes all over your feet. Literally, toes in between your toes, heels, everywhere. Then just put your socks on. It basically prevents maceration in your feet. I mean, it would, you, it doesn't prevent it if you're out all day. You can reapply it. You can put it in your pack and you can reapply it. 
But for me, like I'll put this on at the beginning in the morning before I put my socks on, and that will keep. Well, I did a I did a race on Saturday. I was out for eight hours, ankle deep bogs for the whole thing, soaking wet. I trenched my feet, and when I took my socks off, they were pretty much looked like when I started. So that is a good little trick. Trench, you can get it online. I think from the guy who makes it. I don't know, but yeah, it's definitely on a website somewhere. Um. What's next up? Shoes. Sounds simple, but when we did our first recce, people turned up in road shoes. So um, what I would say is you definitely need a trail shoe. Trail, whether it be a shoe or whether you're planning to walk it and you're in hiking boots, which is great because you'll get the ankle support. But either way, you need a proper trail shoe that has got some proper grip on the bottom that is that's not flimsy like a road shoe that'll just collapse. If you hit a rock in a road shoe, you'll feel every din through the sole of your foot and it will give you no stability. If you hit mud, you will slide. So my point being is you want a proper trail shoe. These just are Salomon Speed Cross. I've used them for years. Um, really good shoe. You can get them from like Sports Shoes, Sports Direct. I think you can now get Salomon from. But shoes, what I would say, is a very personal preference. It's a bit of trial and error. Yes, take advice from friends if you're going, well, I have no idea where to begin. But it is personal preference. So what, what will suit one person will not suit another. I, for example, have very wide feet, but weirdly can wear a Salomon shoe because they're actually relatively narrow. But I do, I, I struggle with feet. So actually I run in a pair of Innovates. Well, I run in these, but I race in a pair of Innovates. And they are quite wide in the toe box. So they really, but that's just me. You, Someone might have really skinny feet and go, oh my God, my feet flap around in a pair of Innovates. So that'd be no good for them. So trainers are personal preference, but you want a good sole. You want it to be not like solid and it needs to be a trail shoe, not a road shoe. You need the grip and you need the stability of the shoe because you're going to be in it for a long time. So just make sure also that you are comfy in that shoe. Um, that's what I was thinking. Okay, shoes. Next up, poles. These are my poles. These are my lecky poles that I absolutely love. I'll talk about this in a minute. Poles, best you can get is retractable poles. If you have poles that are set that you can't break up, basically, you are stuck with them. Whereas something like this, you can put away. So as a, I, I've used these so many times. You can get them in and out so fast. And so this is basically, if you've got poles or you're getting poles, thinking about it, then you want retractable poles. These simply, all I have to do is do that, pull them in a line and it's up. That's how quick those poles go together. And then to take them apart, you simply do the reverse. So it's super easy to be able to do that. So that is what you're looking for with a pole. Now, how you store your poles is up to you there's various different ways so these vests will come some come with pole hooks that you can hook them here some come with pole hooks that you can go along the back this is something i have which is a quiver so you this attaches to the back of your pack so you actually look a bit like uh it's a bit like he-man so you can take your poles out that way so there's a quiver another easy way is a belt so a running belt, you can have it separate then from your pack. And literally, your, you basically wear your running belt. And then you are you can just hook the poles. This will go in the back, and you just hook them in around your back. And then you run along with the poles on your back. So that's another option is a run belt. Loads of people use those. I, if I wasn't wearing, if I'm just going out for, say I went for a run in the steep mountains, but I didn't want to take a pack with me because it was going to just be a really quick, short run. But I want to take my poles. I'd use a run belt and I could put my phone in it and then a, a gel and, and my poles. So there's lots of ways to carry your poles. You just need to have a look at what the options are with your run pack. And if there aren't any, there are, like I said, belt options. So that is an easy way. But if you I would recommend poles, they are a really good option if you have any or have access to some. Um. So then going on to just a few things. If the weather is looking really hot, what I would say is recommend a few things. Wear a cap. You need a cap. 
It's going to keep the sun off your face, off your head, and it's great for dunking. If you get, um, if you're on the beach near the sea, any puddles, any little streams, checkpoints, you can dunk your cap in cold water and pop it on your head and it'll keep you really cool. So that is one good little trick for hot weather. What I would also say if it's really hot is you want to keep the sun off your neck. That is where heat stroke comes from, which I only learned in the last uh, couple of years, which I didn't know. I also thought it was the sun off your face, but I've learned heat stroke is the sun off the back of your neck. So either you can flip your cap around to have the peak on the back of your neck, or you can wear a buff that would cover your neck. Um, there's various, some caps come with basically a neck flap. You, but that, if it's really hot, you definitely want to get your the get your neck covered because that is where the heat stroke will come in. So to me, I just spin my cap around. I'll wear a cap, but I'll spin it around and just depending where the sun is, I'll either have it in my face if it, if the sun's blazing in that way. But if I know the sun's on my back, I'll just spin my cap around and then have the peak um, against my neck. And a little tip for wet weather is also about wearing a cap. If it's pouring with rain and you're wearing a cap. The rain doesn't get on your face. So you've not got rain in your eyes. The peak just keeps the rain off. So that is another little handy trick for wet weather. Um, so what I did put together was a little list of, I just called them tips and tricks. Um, tips and tricks. Oh, one thing that I forgot to say was a phone case. I've just seen it there in my little pile. Phone case. You can get these from Amazon pretty cheap. I mean, you can literally put it in a in a waterproof bag. But what I'm just I'm just showing you mine that it's just a great bit of kit. Keeps it fully waterproof. You can use it um, your phone normally through it, so it's a really handy. You can use the camera. You know, I use it when I'm out running. I can still take all the pictures I want. But it's just better than trying to faff around with a bag, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So they're just really handy. The actual water, and it's shockproof. So if you drop your phone, I mean, I've dropped it a million times during a race, and it's just it's fine. So they're just bulletproof. So they're really good um okay so the little tips and tricks that i wanted to just run through well i suppose i've touched on base on some of them first one is practice where the things go in your in your bag so like i just said my food is always my food is always in my left pocket my phone is always in my front right pocket i know that my sort of reserve snacks are in the left i always have my waterproof at the back at the bottom i have Buffs and gloves on my right, that's more, that's kit. I know where those items live. In the back is where I will put my first aid kit, my bivy bag, etc. Make sure the things that you need are within reach. And then you don't have to take your pack off to get to them. I can get to all the things I will need without having to take it off. Yes, okay, if I need the bivy bag or I need my first aid kit, I would have to take my pack off. But the likelihood is I don't need it. So I won't have to take my pack. I can refill my water, everything. With In a race, I won't take my pack off if I don't have to. So just think when you're packing it, what do you really need and what you're going to use and what are the things that are there for, should we say, emergency? Put them at the bottom of your bag and everything that you are going to use, make sure it's easily accessible because it's back to that thing I was saying about your waterproof. Oh, I can't be bothered getting a, um, getting a sandwich out of my bag. It's at the bottom of my bag. If your sandwich is right there, you'll just go, oh, well, I'll happily eat my sandwich because I've only got to do that and get it. Don't be stuffing. Don't be putting all your stuff in the back that you can't get to because then you just, once you get tired, you just go, oh, I can't be bothered getting it. And that's where you get into a downward spiral because you won't eat, then you don't drink, then you get cold, or because you didn't think about how you packed your bag in the first place. So again, when you're out training, think about where you're packing stuff. And do the same places every time so that you know where it is and it's easily accessible. Uh, touch the base on the sandwich bags. That was one of my, that's one of the best little tips I was given when I first started. Put your kit in sandwich bags and then put an elastic band around it. Elastic band around it. It just keeps it waterproof. Everything's individual. You can just go into your pack and you can see exactly what you need. Don't have a pack just stuffed with load, loads of things. Put them all neatly in and it's really easy to see and organize then and everything stays sweat proof waterproof and if you need to put some dry clothes on it will be dry so that's sandwich bags are the key one uh last what's my last little tip oh checklist so write a full list of all the kit you need literally the whole thing write it out 
And then obviously two in the week before you start to make a pile of all your stuff of what you need, but then also do a on the on the event day checklist. So that when you get up in the morning, you can literally be like, put, put bottles in uh, pack, pick up sandwiches from fridge. Um, you know, like I can't think of what I would. I will literally have watch. I'll have the things that I need on the race morning that are not yet in my bag go on a list, and I literally check them off. I put my heart rate monitor on. I have got my watch on. I have got my running shoes in the car. I have got all those. So. Just make sure you have a checklist and you can't get it wrong. So on the morning when you're nervous, it doesn't matter because you've got that checklist. You go, well, no, I've got everything. So it's absolutely fine. So then you can just be calm rather than panicking going, I've forgotten something. So that's important. Um, and then what, so my two biggest, well, I said, I know that was my last tip, but basically I've saved the two biggest till the end. Uh, number one is practice with your kit bag fully loaded. Use your rum pack, your rucksack, whatever you're going to use on event day. Put all your kit in it. <laughs> put your kit in it and go out on your long training runs with that bag on your back. Because you can't, you, you need to practice with the weight on your back. You need to know if that's going to start rubbing after two to three hours. You need to train with that bag on your back to get it used to it. Or else your back is going to hurt. Your shoulders are going to hurt. Your back's going to hurt. And it's going to affect you on the day. Whereas if you've trained with it, your body will be strong, it'll be used to it, and it just won't even bat an eyelid that you've got the back um, the backpack on all day. And my second thing is along the similar lines is training the kit that you're going to wear for the event. Don't buy a new top and a new pair of leggings or a new pair of shorts and go, oh, I'll wear those on race day. You don't know that they haven't got a funny little seam that really rubs and chafes, and before you know it, you've got, you bleed, you know, you're bleeding for 12 hours because your seam on your leggings is rubbing. So make sure you've worn all your kit your shoes, everything, um, definitely your shoes, but make sure you've worn all that kit lots so that it's fully worn and you just know it's comfy. You know what works. Try different bits of kit. So on your long runs, test it, try what works for you and then just go, yeah, I am happy. I am comfy. My pack is comfy. I know I know that on the day I can run all day and I will be happy with, with what I've got on me. So they are my two big ones practice with your bag fully loaded and training the kit that you're gonna wear um so that well that's pretty much running through the kit um if anyone has got any questions i know i sort of flew through that and maybe i didn't quite go into the detail of what some of my kit is because you might go oh that looks like a great piece of kit fire some questions across either to hugh or get or to me direct and I'll, I'll answer any that I can. But like I said, most most of you will have what you need at home. It doesn't have to be the kit that I've got here. This is just what I use to race with. But I've I've developed this over many years. So I, I know that I like certain things because I've just used it for years and years. Uh, but yeah, happy to talk anyone, talk anyone through any kit or ideas if they want to look at polls, what polls to get, et cetera, et cetera. So happy to do that. Just fire across any questions. But hopefully that has run you through the kit list and given you um, just a better idea of what you need, how to pack your bag, etc. cetera. Um, so, yeah, hopefully that has helped. All right, guys, thanks very much. See you later.